Hi everyone, welcome back to English Digest. I'm Pat. I'm Leah, and we're on day two of our issue article, which is understanding the global cannabis use discourse. So yesterday we had a look at the scientific properties of the compounds in cannabis, and we looked at Taiwan's legal approach, which is quite a strict one. It classifies cannabis quite highly、Hi. as a drug, category two. So it means that people are punished quite strictly, and if they're caught doing it, if celebrities are seen doing it, and I'm sure you guys know of all the cases because it does make a big splash in the media. Uh, it it causes a lot of、um, big debate, big、uh, controversy. So it's an issue, though, that you do need to kind of understand. Yeah, and you want to be aware of what's the viewpoint in Taiwan because living in Taiwan, you want to respect, you know, what the belief is or the 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 government policies are, so you don't do things wrong. And this is a discussion about well, how people might talk about the subject in terms of. Is there any other way to look at it? And that's what we are going to be diving into a bit today. So let's read through day two of our article before we come back to explain what's going on. Given the potential beneficial use of cannabis, some civil society groups in Taiwan are urging changes in cannabis policies. Advocates are calling for its decriminalization, which would lessen legal penalties for possession. Furthermore, they're also pushing for its legalization exclusively for medical purposes, endorsing its use under strict medical supervision for certain health conditions. This argument draws a clear distinction between the medical and recreational use of cannabis, the latter of which advocates think should continue to face legal consequences. In contrast. The approaches to cannabis in countries like Thailand and Canada differ considerably from Taiwan's. Thailand has decriminalized cannabis, permitting individuals to cultivate and trade it for medical purposes. However, although consumption in public places remains illegal, the country faces challenges with legal loopholes leading to a somewhat chaotic situation of unregulated cannabis use. On the other hand, Canada has legalized not only medical cannabis but also recreational cannabis in hopes of diminishing the negative impact of cannabis on society through clear regulation. For example, in an effort to keep cannabis away from minors, age restrictions and advertising restrictions are imposed under the Cannabis Act. To some extent, both examples illustrate the dilemma of legalizing cannabis. Which lies in reconciling its potential for use with its health hazards to ensure public welfare. Adolescents are of particular concern because cannabis use can adversely affect their cognitive development and mental health, putting them at a heightened risk of cannabis-related harm. Moreover, studies show that three in ten casual users develop cannabis use disorder. Showing symptoms of addiction and suffering from social problems. For these reasons, countries considering decriminalization or legalization of cannabis need to think and prepare carefully before taking this step. All right, so diving in,、uh, the good and the bad, right? So here we are given the potential beneficial use of cannabis. So given that there are potential. Good beneficial uses of cannabis. Some civil society groups in Taiwan are urging changes in cannabis policies. So some groups, some groups of civilians,、um, are getting together and they're saying, "Hey, there are good uses of cannabis. Can we change some of the laws and/or、uh, rules about cannabis use or cannabis selling?" So advocates or people who support this particular cause are calling for its decriminalization, which would lessen or reduce lower legal penalties for possession. So the idea of decriminalization is not the same as legalization. Right. You don't make it a legal drug that anybody can just go and buy and open up a shop to sell. You just make it not a high priority for policemen. You don't. Give it such big punishments, 
So it changes the situation from if the police catch you with a tiny amount, you're in big trouble, to the police are not bothered about people having tiny amounts of it because they're concentrating on more harder, more category, more category one drugs, or, larger, or larger groups like gangs who are selling, importing, manufacturing it on a high scale. What they're not going around is just punishing people who have a small amount on them. Because in that case, if if uh, in some places in the world um, there would be a lot of people in jail because mm. they might have had a little bit in their pocket, and so decriminalizing uh, something like this would make it that if they had a bunch in their backpack, they might go to jail. But if they had a little bit on them, they would not. So that is one of the discussions that's going on. Should things be decriminalized? And these advocates, these people that are supporting the decriminalization, are furthermore doing something else. They are, in addition, they are also pushing for its legalization exclusively for medical purposes endorsing its use under strict medical supervision for certain health conditions. So they are not only looking to decriminalize it, they are also wanting, really wanting, they're pushing for um, it to be legalized for medical purposes. So in that case, we're probably talking more with CBD, with mm -hmm. a CBD oil or CBD with a higher level of THC in it. And they are endorsing, they are they are supporting or recommending its use under strict medical supervision. So the, the, uh, the supervisor is a person who watches over things. If you're under supervision, it means you're being watched. You're being uh, looked over to make sure you're doing things right. And that would be a doctor who's making sure if you take this, uh, this therapeutic treatment that you're not having any problems and that it's okay for certain health conditions, certain health problems. Yeah, very particular ones. And this is the sort of thing where they'd make a list like, yes, doctors can prescribe cannabis or CBD products for this, this, and this, and they can pre prescribe this much for this and this much for this. Right. So this argument, this argument of firstly decriminalize and secondly legalize for medical use draws a clear distinction between the med medical, or we could also say medicinal, medicinal, and recreational use of cannabis. So if there's a distinction between two things, you can tell they are different. Yeah. One is very obviously not the other. So they're saying for medical, make it legal, but don't make it legal for recreational use. They're just saying decriminalize it. So they're treating them differently. They're treating them with distinction. They're making a distinction between the two. Recreational just means for fun, right. for pleasure. We talk about recreational spaces. Those are things like parks, public playgrounds, uh, gyms that are open to the public, like a government-run gym would be open to the public. That's a recreational space for right. people to use and have fun. And do recreational activities yeah. in them. Recreational use of cannabis is when people smoke it because they enjoy the feeling of smoking it. And people do, and that's why we call it recreational use, and we separate that from medical use. People are using it to treat a particular condition. So these advocates for this, all of this thing, they're still saying recreational use should consider to face legal consequences. Mm. People who are just smoking it, selling it, buying it just for fun it should still be, that should not be allowed. People should still be punished if they're caught doing it. And if you have to face consequences, it means that you are normally getting in trouble. You don't face consequences for good things. It's, oh, you, you did a great job on this report. You have to face the consequences. No, it's that you did something bad. And when you face the consequences, it means you have to take responsibility for that bad thing that you did. Um, so yeah, they're saying they, it should still be illegal. In contrast, so this is, we're about to talk about something different from what we just talked about with the advocates saying it should be used for medical purposes and be decriminalized. In contrast, the approaches to cannabis in countries like Thailand and Canada differ considerably from Taiwan's. So in Thailand and Canada, they have very different ways, approaches that they are using to go about handling cannabis. Uh, Thailand has decriminalized cannabis, permitting or allowing individuals, individual people, to cultivate and trade it for medical purposes. 
So if it is decriminalized in Thailand, people are allowed to cultivate it, which means they are allowed to grow and harvest it. They are allowed to, you know, raise the plant and take the cannabis uh, aspects from it that they can then sell. And then they can trade it for medical purposes. However, no, so there is a however here. There's more yeah. contrast with this <laughs> dun, dun, rule. Dun. Uh, although consumption in public places remains illegal, the country, Thailand, faces challenges with legal loopholes leading to a somewhat chaotic situation of unregulated cannabis use. So, again, the law is in Thailand at the moment, and it may change. It may have changed by the time this, yeah, this article exactly. comes out. I've heard that they are thinking about making changes. Yeah. So people can grow it and sell it to people for medical uses. So presumably that is supposed to be a bit more controlled. And you're not allowed to consume or use it, smoke it, in, ele in public places. That is illegal. But, but there are legal, legal loopholes. loopholes. A loophole is when a law has something that's kind of vague or ambiguous or doesn't cover every situation or two kind of laws overlap and you're not sure which law you should apply to the situation. Basically, it means that there's a lot of ways that people can say, oh, no, no, this is, a, this is not a public place. Right. Or uh, how do you know? Or how much is allowed and how much is not? Or, the, uh, you know, the medical reason I need to use it for is that I like the, the like to use it sort yeah. of thing, and then it becomes very chaotic. So it's chaos. It's not. It's not clear. It's not uh, organized. It's, yeah, or handled. Ordered. In a, oh, and yeah, ordered. That's a great one. So it's a chaotic situation uh, for unregulated cannabis use. And if you've seen some of the celebrities that came back to Taiwan with cannabis products from Thailand. They said, well, we got it there and it was okay to use. Hmm. Well, it's decriminalized there. I don't know that they could legally use it unless it was for medical reasons, but you can find it in a lot of places hmm. there, gummies and I guess other stuff yeah, too. Yeah, and the police have got often bigger things to deal with than just a few celebrities getting a bit silly on in a bar with it. Yeah, so they, they deal with something else. Yeah. So that is what Thailand has done. And we can see it's not entirely perfect. It's got these loopholes that mean they're not quite sure. It's led to a lot of unregulated use, so it's not being controlled or policed that well. And things are very chaotic. So it seems that that is not an ideal way to go about things. Canada has taken a different approach, but we'll hear about that after we hear from our Chinese teacher. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们昨天带大家提到啊，这个 marijuana 或者是 cannabis 大麻，其实真的是有很多的争议，因为它是的确有疗效，可是呃 THC 这个成分对于我们又有一些 negative effects 负面的一些呃负面的一个所谓的副作用。那所以在文章一开始呢。当然就是有鉴于这个大麻潜在的一些用途嘛，所以台湾其实有一些团体真的就是一直在推动，看看大麻是不是可以除罪化，至少要做到除罪化了哈。第一段的第一句，这里的 given 把它抓出来 ，given 后面其实省略了三个字哦，你可以用挂号把它带进去。Given the fact that， 其实真的就是字面上了，被给予了这件事情哦，你被给予这件事情，你有看到这件事情，你了解到这件事情。有鉴于这样的情况，有鉴于 cannabis 有这样子的一个 beneficial use， 哎，其实也有一些有益用途，哎，所以台湾的 civil society groups 一些社会公民团体，他们就希望能够推动一些政策。比如说呢，第二句第一个字的主词也很重要，叫做 advocate。advocate 就是所谓的提倡呼吁的人。那这个字本身也可以当及物动词，就是。倡导、提倡、呼吁，可是动词的念法叫做 advocate。advocate， 那在这里是人哦 ，advocates， 他们就呼吁了，呼吁什么呢 ？Call for something， 至少要除罪化。那罪叫做 crime，criminal 是所谓的罪犯的意思。那我们知道，形容词加上 i z e 就是使什么什么化。所以有罪化叫做 criminalize， 除罪是把 criminalize 前面加上 d e， 名词后面变成 t i o n， 所以我们在第一段第二句看到逗点前面的除罪化 decriminalization 这个字是这样来的，就很好记哦。逗点之后从汇聚到句尾可以左右挂号起来，当然它就是一个补充说明的关系子句。那这里的汇聚真的指的就是
。大麻如果除罪化之后，至少对于 possession 挂号里面最后一个字 possession， 如果拥有大麻的话，可以减轻 legal penalty 法律上的一些惩罚。不过这时候你就在想说，哎 ，decriminalization。Legalization 这个除罪化跟合法化到底有什么差？其实除罪化是除刑法的罪，也就是不用坐牢。可是如果真的是因为持有大麻或贩卖或怎么样，可能会有一些民事的赔偿的责任。所以除罪跟合法完全不一样，它是不同的概念哦。那 Legalization 就是完全不犯法的意思，所以。大麻的除罪化并不是说完全合法，它可能还是会有一些民事上，假设有危害他人的话，会有一些赔偿责任，但是至少不会像之前的规定这么严格，可能会坐牢啦，或者是高额的罚金啊等等之类，至少在形式上是没有什么问题。那因为我们说它有疗效嘛，所以有一些病患的确是很需要大麻的治疗。好，接着我们就来同样看一下第一句哦。第一句，请对这个第一段，第一段啊，请特别注意一下第四句这个地方，因为我们说，呃，这个大麻其实它有医疗的用途，然后也有有些人是抽大麻好玩的，所以有两个形容词要特别抓出来。第一段第四句 ，medical and recreational use of cannabis， recreational， recreation 就是娱乐嘛，所以如果只是抽好玩的、抽放松的，这个是娱乐的用途，在文章当中也会一直出现。所以，医疗的用途 （medical use）， 娱乐的用途 （recreational use）。而同样这一句逗点之后的 the latter 也要抓出来，因为我们在文章当中如果提到两个不同概念，根据先后顺序，前者如何如何，后者如何如何，这个前者叫做 the former（f o r m e r），the former； 后者 the latter（latter l a t t e r）。而后面的汇聚就很巧妙啦，汇聚指的是前面提到的两种不同用途 ，medical use and recreational use。那所以现在强调的是后者，当然还是会有法律上面的责任。那为什么要用汇聚呢？因为汇聚本身就是官代嘛，代就是代名词，所以它可以代替这个句子当中前面提到的东西。我们说两种用途，那为什么要用汇聚呢？所谓的官代的官是什么意思？官就是。连接的关系，所以冠带本身是有连接词 and 的这个功能。你再仔细看看 the letter 前面逗点之后，没有任何的连接词，这个连接词 and 已经包在汇聚里面了。好，所以接着呢，我们就要来看到第二段喽。第二段我们就要看一下泰国跟加拿大的状况。泰国呢已经将大麻除罪化喽，那当然除罪化之后，还是会有一些混乱的状态。所以我们在第二段特别注意一下这里第三句的地方，这些混乱的状态就是说 ，OK， 医疗用途可以，但是公开的场合不行。第三句 ，consumption in public places， consumption 不是消费消耗的意思吗？它的动词原型叫做 consume， c o n s u m e， 这个 consume 只要是你吃喝用都叫做消耗，所以在这里的 consumption 指的是。服用大麻的这一件事情，好，这是 illegal 的不行哦。可是这中间还是会有很多法律漏洞。哎，英文真的有法律漏洞这个字哎，同样在第二段的这个第三句的地方。好，找中间哦，中间这边的 legal loopholes， loophole 就是所谓的漏洞哦，法律的漏洞叫做 legal loophole， 这个要把它记起来，我们会用到的。后面的 leading 一直到句尾是关系子句的简化。那么 lead 本来应该改成 which 或者是 let lead。那当然，先行词就是所谓的法律漏洞，就是会有一些这个混乱的情况。这是泰国。We'll take a short break and we'll be right back with part two. Welcome back, everyone. So we have another. Contrast transition、Ooh. here. We so we st- started with in contrast. Yes, we started with in contrast to contrast Taiwan's approach with, or Taiwan advocates what advocates say should be Taiwan's use with Thailand's use. Then we had, however, another contrast <laughs> to show 
how Thailand's laws maybe aren't working that well. On the other hand, though, yeah, here's another new contrast to what's gone before. On the other hand, what is Canada doing that's different? Canada has legalized not only medical cannabis but also recreational cannabis in hopes of diminishing the negative impact of cannabis on society. Through clear regulation, that's so, interesting. Yeah, so they've made it legal to use for medical use, and people can buy it if they've got and get it if they've got a note from the doctor. But people can also go into stores in Canada and buy certain amounts of it. But they're doing it with a purpose, right? Their hope is to, you know, stop having cannabis have a bad influence or effect on society. And they want to do that through clear regulation, clear rules. Yeah, rules on how strong the stuff can be that gets sold, how much people can buy, the kinds of places that are allowed to sell it. They have to have licenses, just like they were selling wine or beer, alcohol products. And of course, they can tax it since、yes. it's a legal product. So the government makes money, the price goes up. Things like that happen. There, there are a lot of layers to it,、um, but they've decided, okay. We're not gonna. People are gonna still smoke or use cannabis, even if we say stop. So if we make it legal, we can control it better, and it won't just be an illegal drug. And That's ideally, the theory. ideally, right? They're trying to stop kids from really using it so much, which is part of the negative impact of cannabis on society. That's what's mentioned in this next sentence. It says, for example, in an effort to keep cannabis away from minors, so people under. The age of maturity,、yeah. so either twenty-one or eighteen,、Something、depending、like、on、that. most places. Age restrictions, so rules about who, what age you can buy, and advertising restrictions. So you can't like advertise buying cannabis on big billboards, probably.、Mm. Um, but these sorts of restrictions are imposed, so they are put in place, and they are, you know, they are set up with kind of a strict. Rule of they are imposed on under the Cannabis Act, and that must be what they're using for the law in Canada is the Cannabis Act.、Mm. And so it kind of makes it just like cigarettes and tobacco or alcohol. It's another legal drug that people can attempt to try and control, police, and kind tax. of tax. Yeah, tax and keep away from younger people. Right, that kind of thing. So it's another approach. So the article then moves on to the concluding paragraph and says. To both extent, or to some extent, both examples illustrate or show the dilemma, the this kind of really difficult, tricky problem with no easy outcome of legalizing cannabis. And what is the dilemma? It lies in reconciling its potential for use with its health hazards to ensure public welfare.、Mm. It goes back to what we were saying yesterday: cannabis compounds are a double-edged sword. They can be medically helpful. But there are also health hazards, and we have to reconcile them. To reconcile two things means to kind of make or acknowledge one thing, and、uh, what seems to be its opposite are both true. It's kind of like saying both sides of an argument have to sort of meet in the middle somehow. And so you go, okay, yes, it does this. Yes, it's also good. Yes, it's also bad. How do we make a rule which satisfies? Allowing the good but controlling the bad—that is the reconciling they're doing here. I did want to posit that、uh, in the U.S. we mentioned、uh, Thailand and Canada.、Mm. In the U.S., like 38 of 50 states allow for medical、uh, marijuana usage, and 24 of 50 states allow for recreational. So states like Hawaii, Kentucky, Arkansas have medical. Colorado, California, Oregon have recreational. If they have recreational, they allow recreational. And medical for mm, sure, of sure,、uh, and then places like Texas, Tennessee, and Idaho do not allow either at the at the moment as we we're talking. So, so yeah, another way that is that things are being done in different places. Yeah, with the U.S. with a sort of different type of government structure, it allows you to have those different sort of rules. Yeah,、like、each、that. state can have its own rules. So the idea here in this sentence is what we're saying is to get to legalize cannabis, we have to go. Okay, we're legalizing something that. Can actually hurt people.、And、that's what we'll talk about here. Right? Exactly. That's what the next sentence moves on to. Some of the dangers: adolescents, so young people, particularly teenagers, kind of any adolescents. I would say is like eleven to twenty. It's that stage when your brain、uh, is really in its biggest time of development. You're making all these connections in your brain, 
And that's uh, in that adolescent period is when, you know, you really need to let your brain have its healthy daily mm. life to be able to grow and be healthy as you become an adult. Yeah, you're not quite a full adult yet. It's it's a, it's a probably broader than teenager, yeah. I would say. And it's one of the biggest times in your yeah. life for your brain growth. But they are of particular concern because cannabis use can adversely affect their cognitive development and mental health. So cognitive is your brain's, brains. ability, basically. It's your yeah. ability to think, to connect cause and effect, to remember knowledge, to basically work as the thinking machine that your brain is supposed to be. So mental health is more to do with your emotions and your feelings. So it's affecting both and putting them at a heightened or raised a higher risk of cannabis-related harm. Okay, and so it says, moreover, studies show that 3 in 10 casual users, so those would be recreational users probably, casual users develop cannabis use disorder. And that means that they are showing symptoms of addiction and suffering from social problems. Um, so so we're looking into the study a little bit more. One problem is, of course, uh, the need to protect adolescents and their growing brains and their uh, brains that are developing its complexity and their mental health from trying to keep them uh, away from this cannabis-related harm. But we also need to make sure that we are aware that there are quite a few people that are having showing problems when they use cannabis. So they mm. have disorders that are coming about and their symptoms, their signs, their things that are a sign of their problem, um, their symptoms of addiction, addiction as in being having to have something without being able to stop is when you're addicted to something, right? Yeah. And it's you have this desperate need for something and you can't stop doing something uh, is there. The people are showing symptoms of that addiction. And that's why they're you know, like, wait a minute, watch out. Taiwan says, let's let's be careful here. And also that folks are suffering from social problems. So, you know, maybe they're 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 getting high. And then, like I was saying uh, yesterday, they are having that paranoia that can often come with being high. They think everybody's talking about them or they think everybody's looking at them. And that would be something that might be a social problem that mm. would develop for you, a paranoia. Yeah, or people who just kind of don't really want to do anything except chill out with friends and smoke uh, and use it and not really not get in, social. <laughs> yeah, not get involved and not like really achieve their full potential, yeah. which is something a lot of people are worried about. Yeah. I'll quickly mention that medically, signs and symptoms are different. A symptom mm, is something okay. that can be reported by a person. Okay. Like if you go and have a cold, you'd say, I have a runny nose. Nose, I have a sore throat, mm. I have a blocked up nose. Those are all symptoms. A sign is something that somebody else would notice through a test. So okay. maybe elevated blood levels of like white blood cells because you're fighting an infection. Right. Or they would take your temperature and notice something that may be a higher increase that you didn't feel like, oh, I feel hot. Right. So a symptom is something you can kind of report just Yourself. by general observation. But a sign is something they would confirm of a through a medical test. It's often like in the blood or somewhere else that you maybe wouldn't see it yourself. Thank you, Dr. Pat. There we go. <laughs> so for these reasons, because of these social problems, potential addiction, risk of development in adolescence, and all of these other legal kind of problems with how do you make something legal when it's both potentially good and obviously potentially dangerous, right. that's why... Uh, countries who are considering either decriminalization or legalization of cannabis need to think and prepare carefully before taking this step. So you need to think, what are, if we do this, what are the results? And also, if we do this, we've got to have all the laws ready for right. when it happens. We need to have, you know, if it's legal, do we then have inspectors to go around? If it's decriminalized, have we got the police properly trained on? Okay, what to stop, what to ignore, what to like arrest people for, what to let people go for. Absolutely. A lot and of work has to be done. A lot of work, a lot of groundwork, I guess you'd say, right? Mm. The think and prepare steps are your groundwork that you would be taking care of before you would say, okay, maybe we'll move in this direction. So it's always good to be either strict in, in this sort of situation or 
careful, I think, might be a, a different way of looking at it instead of necessarily being strict, maybe careful. Yeah, you wouldn't. You can't just like, okay, we're going to pass a law, it's legal now, the things have changed. You can't just do that. It's something you have to like prepare and study for and train people for and write laws and vote on and things like that. So it's not an easy process. But what is an easy process is listening to our Chinese teacher. Let's hand over right now. That Canada, ne, 不仅仅是除罪化，根本就是 legalization， 就是 legalized。大麻已经合法化。那为什么呢？因为他们希望透过很明确的监管，来减少大麻对于社会负面的影响。比如说，他们在年龄限制啊、广告限制啊，都尽量能够做到很明确的规范。这个是加拿大的状况。你有没有记得我们昨天在谈 CBD 跟 THC 的时候，在文章也用了一个转成词语，也出现在今天第二段中间第四句的地方。On the other hand， 我们现在要看两个国家，可两个国家的做法不尽相同，所以而另外一方面，加拿大却是如何如何。这个时候用 On the other hand， 比其他的转成词语还来得更好哦。好，我们刚刚说，呃。比如说，这个大麻远离未成年人这件事情很重要，他们有很明确的规范。这个法律上的未成年人出现在同样第二段第五句中间的这个地方，逗点前面有一个 minor。minor 本来是那种很呃很微小的，或者是比较小量、小众的意思，在法律当中，未成年人就叫做 minor。所以像 age restrictions 年纪限制，甚至连 advertising restrictions。广告都很严格哦，在大麻法上面的施行都是非常严格的。那“施行”这个字，有时候学测翻译也会考哦。之前也曾经考过，我们如果施行什么样的政策啊，实行就会用 “impose”。impose 也同样出现在第二段最后一句这边。好，最后我们就来结束这个文章喽。当然，在第三段这边，我们就会说啦，哎，大麻其实有好也有坏。如果真的是。decriminalize decriminalization， 如果真的是除罪化了，或者是 legalization， 或者是合法化，其实都是有好有坏。所以这个这这个有好有坏啊，就是有一个关键字，就叫做两难。因为合法也不对，然后不合法，合法又会有法律漏洞啊。如果不合法的话呢，好像又不对。所以在第三段最后面这边的第一句，我们特别来看一下，第一句这里有一个 dilemma。dilemma 这个字就是所谓的两难的意思，两难。所以台湾到底要怎么做呢？我们到底是应该要先真的就开始往 decriminalization 去走，还是要直接进到 legalization？ 这个就是大家需要再讨论的地方。那以上就是我们今天的内容，希望大家对于大麻合法化这件事都有一些了解。我是 Anna， 我们下次见。Okay, so that brings us to the end of our two-day article on the global discourse surrounding cannabis use. And again, we hope to have provided you with some some facts and some food for thought and a general awareness of the situation. Again, we'll make it clear we're not supporting any particular position、right. on this issue. We just want to give you guys the facts so that you can kind of make a bit more of an educated discussion and learn more and find out more yourselves. Absolutely. But that brings us to the end of what we're going to talk about today. Thanks for listening for English Digest. I'm Pat. I'm Leah, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.